we have a little conversation with Professor Birju Shah, Professor of AI at uh, Northwestern in Kellogg Business School. So, hi Birju, how are you? Good, buenos, buenos dias. Buenos dias. We are very happy to have you here and start a, a small conversation about artificial intelligence. What is that? Yeah, artificial intelligence. <laughs> yes. It's basically a robot okay. that is supposed to take over a human. Oh God. <laughs> no, please. <laughs> no, 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 artificial intelligence, is, it's been a journey for the last 30 years. Okay. And what I mean by that is that, you know, as we moved online back in the late 90s, we started giving data to the internet. And as we gave data to the internet, we started bringing connections of that data together. And as we connected that data, the, the internet itself was able to tell what were people's intentions. You know, were they, were, would they want to buy the latest dress? Do they want to buy the latest beer, right, cerveza? Or do they, want to, do they just want to interact with their friends online? At first time, it was just analysis and prediction. That's right, all prediction. So uh, artificial intelligence started with machine learning. Machine learning was using all our historical data that we wrote on the internet to be predictive. Right? to predict your next transaction, to predict the next ad that you'll click on, right? Now then, AI hmm. is creative, yes. right? So AI is now taking all that data and now being creative, making decisions for you, helping you make decisions. It's a creative partner, yeah. That's interesting, bro, because uh, I think, I don't know the exact days, but it started very recently, this generative trend. Yes. Can you talk about that? Yeah, generative trend started about one year ago now. Yeah, one year? One year, yes. right? And in one year, it's the fastest growing application in the globe. So it hit 100 million users in one month, and now it's hit 2 billion people in one year across the globe. And we're using it that we don't even know how we're using it. In WhatsApp, we use it every day, right? When you interact with any business on WhatsApp, there's a large language model, a generative AI, a chatbot. Exactly. That you're interacting with, right? Yes. So you're interacting with it every day, uh, especially if you're a global company in some sort of way. So generative AI is really the ultimate creative partner. It's your, it's your friend, it's your yes. chat, it's your partner, yeah. This point you take right now. It's very interesting because when we are talking in these text messages, yeah. we are interacting with these models that are predicting, for example, your autocorrect. That's right. We used to complain a lot about it, but we are interacting and we are training them. That's right. Yeah. And we are doing the same with these tools right now. Yeah. It's, it's very interesting. From an individual level, we've been training the world of AI for free. Yes. At a company level, this is important now. Now the question is, is how do you use these technologies that you don't even know you're using exactly. and you're giving free data away? Yeah. So you actually have to have a lot of governance in place with AI. And so exactly. even if you don't want to use AI, you are using it and you have to have governance. And so yes. it's called human in the loop. Okay. It's where you are teaching the robot how to interact with you better. Mm -hmm. And as you talk to it more, you are training it. Yes. And then it's getting smarter and smarter and smarter. So another risk. Job substitution. Yeah. Yeah. What's going to happen? What's, uh, yeah. what's going to happen? <laughs> I mean, I'd, I'd like to say CEOs keep their job, but I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. no I, think, I think what we're seeing, we were talking about this, right? That yeah, yeah. a lower level, you're seeing a lot of productivity increase. Yes. So if you're a programmer, mm -hmm. you have 88% more productivity. You can okay. code more. So if you yes. can build one website, now you can build eight more websites in the same yes. time frame. Exactly. Right? If you're a marketer, mm -hmm. uh, instead of 100 ads per month, you can now do 1,000 ads per month. Wow. So we're seeing productivity, Yes. Uh, but then we're seeing a lot of automation. So yes. customer service, those jobs are going away. Call center jobs? Yes, of course. Call center jobs may move into data center, meaning a uh, computer is going to have it, right? Yes. What I'm really seeing, and this has been very interesting the last three months, is more R&D value uh, creation, not value capture. Okay. So discovering new drugs, mm -hmm. discovering new material science, yes. discovering a new channel of how to market. Mm -hmm. uh, they're now using generative AI to where there's so much information, it takes years of research, That's accelerating R&D. Right. So I do view within the year, uh, research and development functions, yes. as well as these productivity functions, they are going to get very automated. It's not only the, the low uh, uh, right. workers, also researchers, yeah, also researchers. scientists, or yeah. entry level, but yes. And that's usually for most companies that ends up being their their main reason, right? Yes. Their science that they develop or their, exactly. their IP, their, their patents yes. that they develop. But what's also interesting is that if you're a company in Mexico versus a company in the United States versus a company in India, mm -hmm. you have an opportunity to go global. Well, let's, uh, let's leave the risk aside a little bit. Let's talk about opportunities. Yeah, so Let's talk many. about recommendations. Yeah, so many. It's a very interesting future ahead. Yeah, right? it's, it's very interesting. And, and, and I like to say you have to run a process on recommendations, yes. right? We, we say you have to find the problem, you have to bottle it, meaning yeah. the data that you have, and then you have to design the way that you want to interact with it. Okay, so okay. find it, kind of design it, and bottle it, right? Okay, okay. And as you do that, the opportunities are kind of endless. Okay. So when you think about your P&L, your profit yes. and loss, yes. 
you say, I want to hit a revenue target of 5% more next year. Now with AI, you might have to say 15%. Wow. Because you can market to that many more people, you yes. can sell more efficiently. And so now when you think about the workflows that go into that, yes, yes, yes. it's all about being able to use AI to automate those workflows and those opportunities. So we're seeing across the board from HR, legal, marketing, yeah. first three use cases, as yeah. well as coding. Okay. Now we're seeing in sales, uh, the opportunity with AI is so extremely high. You can do personalized sales, right? Exactly. And so there's a lot, a lot of nuances and personalization and we're seeing a lot of value creation. Well, just last question, yeah. last question. How do you see this? Imagine the future is also a, a, an exercise that is kind of funny, but also perhaps not very, not very profound. But let me ask you this. Imagine yourself in five years. Yeah. Imagine yourself in 10 years. Yeah. You see this technology, where do you see it? Where do you go? There's two, way, there's two ways that I really see it. In, yes. I'll say 10 years, let's say. Okay. It's called embodied AI uh -huh. and it's assisted AI. Okay. Embodied AI means that the generative models, mm -hmm. they're going to be put in robotics. Okay. So you will see these humanoid robots doing functions, making my coffee, driving me in the car. Yes. Not self-driving cars, the robot driving cars. It's yeah, called yeah, Embodied yeah. AI. Okay. And Embodied AI has made an extreme jump in innovation this last year. Wow. So I do see a world in 10 years where we will all have robot assistants legitimately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Embodied AI and that's happening, right? Wow. Wow. Uh, now in assistive AI, yes. I view that it's called the third offset strategy. Yes. A human plus a robot is always going to be better than a robot exactly. or a human. So I do view that the digital twin that we use, okay, okay. that we're always going to be using these generative AI chatbots to be assisted to us. And that's always me plus a robot will always be better than a robot. And I think that's going to be ubiquitous for everyone. Yeah. And that's a, a, an option that I think a lot of people would love to hear. Yeah. Because somehow we don't make your, ourselves uh, redundant. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and even if you do make yourself redundant, we're humans. I think yes. the one thing to not be fearful of is we'll create something else for us. Yes. Right. We will always, whether we all go to space because we're bored on Earth, yes. uh, or we have more time to vacation or tell your partner you love them. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. So exactly, I, th yes. I think that we will have more time. Right? And maybe the four day work week becomes a reality, yeah. or maybe there's just another problem we have to solve. Right? So I think the, the fallacy of us getting redundant isn't true. Okay. Right? I think that we as society always have problems to solve That's that right. are always bigger than the previous generation. So That's we're right. in the fourth industrial revolution. Yes. So it's a gold mine, it's a gold rush. Yeah, get that gold. <laughs> yes, get that gold and go for the stars. Yeah, right. Go for the stars, yeah. Thank you very much, Virgil, for your insights, for your approach. Thank you very much.